So let's uh, answer from this end. First of all, what is yoga? Well, uh, right now unfortunately even in this country where it all began, people's idea of yoga is actually a rebound from the American coast. They think yoga means twisting yourself into various postures, <laughs> impossible postures. That you should look like a leftover noodle. <laughs> no, I want you to understand what yoga means. Yoga means union. Union means See, right now you're here, even you are breathing? Your friend also breathing, you think so? Okay. Of course you're eating food, drinking water, there are many other levels of transactions, but at least these very physical things, you understand, without this transaction, you cannot exist, isn't it so? Hello? So in a way, what this is telling you is, you are just a small creature, just a small pop-up. You have pop-ups on your phone screen which pop up and pop out. On this planet you are just a pop-up and you will pop out. Yes. So you think you are an individual existence by yourself. No. If you lose connection with the atmosphere around you, you will die, isn't it? If you don't eat or drink, you will die. Not just that, every cell, every subatomic particle in this body is in transaction. If the transaction doesn't happen, you can't exist for a moment. But psychologically, you get yourself into such a cocoon that you think you are an individual existence all by yourself. Yoga means you consciously obliterate the boundaries of your individuality. Because if you do not consciously obliterate the boundaries of your individuality, then unknowingly your life is you versus the universe. It's a very… you must listen to me on this one, you can take my advice on this, it's a bad competition to get into. You versus the universe, definitely you will feel like dying. When you face such a big competition, it's not worth living, it'll become like that. So how people normally handle it is, by obliterating it in unconscious ways a little bit. Uh, somebody falls in love with somebody, suddenly they've opened up the boundaries of their individuality a little bit to somebody. The English expression of falling in love is a good expression because something of you has to fall. You can't rise in love, you can't fly in love, you can't climb in love. You have to fall in love. That means… Hey. That means something of you has to be stripped, something of you has to fall down. You have to make space for something else, little bit of unconscious yoga you did. Does he still don't want to do yoga? So this longing to become to break the boundaries, if it finds very physical, basic expression, we call this sexuality. If it finds emotional expression, we call this a love affair. If it finds a mental expression, it gets labeled as ambition, conquest or uh, simply shopping. If it finds a conscious expression, we call it yoga. In your life, what do you think? Whatever you do in your life, is it better to do consciously or unconsciously? What do you think? Consciously. So if you do a conscious obliteration of your boundaries, you understand you are unnecessarily building a psychological structure where you're feeling trapped. If you consciously obliterate this, this is called yoga. If you obliterate it physically, it's called sex. If you obliterate it emotionally, it's called love. If you try to obliterate it mentally, it's called achievement, conquest, ambition, fulfillment, victory, these kind of things. But all those things, how long do they last? 
momentarily because it's unconscious. If you consciously obliterate the boundaries of your individuality, you can sit here like the universe with the same stability. Now, where do you want to die and go? Because anything that you did not make, you have no right to destroy, isn't it? Did you make this life? Hello? Did you make this life? Are you capable? No. Then how come? Your only problem is your mental structure has become a mess. You can easily unmess it. They must do yoga. Totally got the point. But Sadhguru.